Dream stands are back in the news, and once again they're as embarrassing as ever. I'm not going to talk about specific actions of Dream stands like some of my other videos. Instead, I'm going to talk about how different creators are handling their stands. There is one very important thing I want to make clear before we begin. Whenever I refer to stands in the video, I am talking about people who obsess over Dream and cannot think for themselves. I am not talking about normal fans of Dream, nor am I talking about people who refer to themselves as stands, but don't obsess over Dream. I will talk about this more later in the video, but now let's jump right into it. This whole thing started when Josh put out a series of tweets on his alt account. I'm not going to read every tweet word for word, but to summarize, someone made this helpful meme. Josh is addressing the unhealthy, obsessive nature of stands of creators and criticizing the culture they have made to normalize this unhealthy behavior. He is not addressing every fan, he is only addressing fans who obsess over content creators in an unhealthy manner. He is also putting the blame partially on the creators who turn a blind eye on it, which results in making the unhealthy fan problem worse. And also, while this wasn't included in the meme, another big part of Josh's point is that stand culture promotes people blindly following certain people no matter what. And that in stand culture, thinking for yourself is discouraged, while going with the popular opinion is heavily encouraged. I think that summarizes everything Josh said throughout most of his tweets. Now let us go over some things Josh did not say in any of his tweets. You can double check this as well if you want. At first, he did not call out any specific creators contributing to the problem. But once people started responding to his tweets, he later called out Dream, Tubbo, and Carl Jacobs. He did not say that he hates all stands. He said that he hates the culture surrounding stands and thinks that it is better if the stands reform their actions. He did not say you cannot like a dream or anything for that matter. He only said you should not obsess over anything. Those three things I feel are common misconceptions that people think Josh said. Now that we got the initial tweets out of the way, I will now try to go over every prominent creator's response to it. The quickest people to respond were Noah Hugbox and Call Me Carson. Noah first replied to Josh's tweets seemingly agreeing with him, although I would be lying if I said I completely understood what he said there. After people began to defend Dream, Noah began to basically troll on most of the Dream stands, putting out a bunch of nonsensical tweets just to get people riled up. There really wasn't anything of value added to the conversation though, so I'll just leave it at that. Carson was also memeing a lot in most of his responses to Josh's tweet, though he did add one interesting thing to the conversation. This was stated by a lot of other people, but Josh's point was proven by obsessive fans either quote tweeting or commenting on the post. A lot of what the stands responded with were either insults like what zero pussy does to a motherfucker, or greatly taken what Josh was saying out of context. It is very likely that a lot of these stands did not even read what Josh said, and just went with the common opinion that Josh was wrong, which is one of the exact points in Josh's post. Now let's get into the reason you probably clicked on this video. How did Dream take this tweet when he saw it? To answer that question simply, he took it very, very personally. Keep in mind that Josh didn't really call out Dream at all. Josh did not specifically say that Dream was just as bad as his toxic community or that Dream is contributing to the toxic behaviors. Josh simply stated that Dream is someone that people obsess over. Dream saw Josh's tweet and responded with, You're an idiot. Wow, you got him, Dream. Owned with facts and logic. He had a similar response to one of Hugbox's tweets. Instead of trying to refute any argument, he just responds with insults. He could have tried to have a discussion with Josh about toxic stands, but no. He decided to just ignore their criticisms. Josh then responds by saying basically what I just said, only at this point Josh does call out Dream for being a contributor to why his fanbase is so toxic. To be fair to Dream, he did end up making a few arguments about why stands aren't that bad, but to be fair to everyone watching this video, the arguments were probably worse than the insults. Dream first tries to redefine what a stand is, basically saying that stands are just fans. This is another side of the debate that is actually pretty interesting. Dream is kind of right that over the past 6 months, the word stan has been redefined by some people to mean a synonym of fan. However, I think this argument doesn't really hold up. Many people still view the definition of stan as an obsessive fan, and there really isn't any other word for an obsessive fan. And really, it is partly the stan's own fault so many people associate themselves with idolization and generally unhealthy behavior. Normal fans of Dream decided to call themselves stans, and then got mad when people called them obsessive. That is like if my friends and I decided to call ourselves the morons, and then got mad at people when they said we were acting moronic. If you don't want to be called obsessive or a stalker, then don't refer to yourself as something that is obsessive and a stalker. Just call yourself super fans or something. 
Later, Dream put out a tweet where he called people hypocrites when they say that obsessing over Dream is weird, when they obsess over football players or other celebrities. What Dream says here is true, but again, this isn't really an argument. Yeah, maybe there are a few people being hypocritical, but Josh wasn't. Neither is Noah or Carson or the majority of people criticizing Dream. Ironically, I feel as if Dream is generalizing his critics with this tweet in the same way he claims that his critics generalize his stance. Since he is very vague, it can be interpreted as if Dream is calling all of his critics stands of Tom Brady or other famous celebrities. At the end of the day, people are still unhealthily obsessing over Dream and his friends. And just saying that people obsess over other celebrities doesn't make Dream stands any better. This tweet by Frosty pretty much sums up why what Dream is saying here just doesn't hold up. Dream also said that people who hate on his stands just don't like the same thing as them. Again, maybe this is true for some people, but a lot of Dream's critics watch Dream and his friends and enjoy his content. If you watch any video of a 100 sub commentator on YouTube talk about Dream, they will most likely start off by saying they enjoy his content. So saying that his critics just don't enjoy his content isn't even accurate. Next, we have a lot of similar responses to Josh's tweet, each of them siding with Dream, but none of them really making any good counter arguments to what Josh is saying. First, we have Just Verb, who simply said, Stop generalizing stands. Spifey also tweeted out virtually the same thing. Again, this relates back to people misinterpreting the meaning of stan, which I already talked about in my response to Dream, and my point still stands here. However, let's entertain the possibility that Dream and his friends did magically change the definition of the word stan. What Spifey, Verb, and other people with similar arguments are really saying here is that Josh is wrong to call people who obsess over him stans, and it is only some crazy fans of Dream. Okay, sure. Josh should have said obsessive and crazy fans instead of stans. So what? Just because Josh might have referred to the people who idolize Dream with the wrong noun, doesn't mean people don't idolize Dream. All of his points about crazy fans of Dream still stand. Another one of Dream's friends, Antfrost, also misinterpreted what Josh was saying. Antfrost put out a tweet where he indirectly says that Josh was calling out people simply for liking and enjoying something. FitMC put out a similar tweet where he said that the moment you decided to tell someone to stop liking something, you have become old. This is such a gross misinterpretation of what Josh said, I don't even know if Antfrost or Fit are referring to him with these tweets. Josh did not say once that he cannot like Dream, that he cannot be a fan of anything for that matter. What he did say was that you should not obsess over something to an unhealthy degree, and to the point where people's mental or physical health is at risk. I'm pretty disappointed in Antfrost and Fit for being so reckless with their response to the drama, that they spread a pretty big misconception to all of their followers. Colin Smoke is another person who misinterpreted what Josh said, although I could just be stupid and this tweet was a joke. Once more, Josh never said you cannot like something. I don't know how so many people miss this. Also, it's pretty ironic that one of the people who have been a victim of Dream's toxic stance still tries to defend the stance. I don't know if Colin is as ignorant or scared of the stance, but this response seems pretty weird knowing that he has faced direct harassment from Dream's and his fans over to attack him. Colin's brother Nathan responded similarly. And I am just including this response because I think it's funny that he feels the need to say, Stands are humans too. No one I saw was Colin Stan's animals or subhumans. Some people called the culture evil and horrific, but for the individuals involved, I still think people treated Stan's as humans. The best person to defend Dream I want to talk about is Nut Nobody, also known as Skydas Minecraft. I bring up Nut Nobody's tweets because he was the only person I saw to make a good argument for why Josh is wrong. Nut Nobody first states that Josh is only focusing on toxic parts of Dream's fanbase that he specifically cherry picked, which Josh then refutes by saying he has genuinely come to the conclusion that the stand community is toxic. Nut Nobody then says that people obsessing over Dream and similar YouTubers is no different than people obsessing over bands or TV shows. While these are similar arguments to what Dream made, Nut Nobody presents them in a more sophisticated and well thought out way than Dream did. I've already kind of refuted these points, but to add on to what I was saying before, the difference between a stan of Dream or anything on Twitter and a super obsessive fan of a band like Linkin Park in the 2000s is that Dream interacts with his fanbase constantly. Linkin Park and other bands only ever interacted with their fans at concerts and similar events. After their commitments were done, they went back to their normal lives. For Dream, it is sort of the opposite. The main attraction of Dream is his videos, but after a fan watches his videos, he can attempt to interact with Dream on sites like TikTok and Twitter. The desire to interact with Dream is what I think fuels a lot of obsessions toxic stands have with Dream. 
There are also some people who empathize with both sides of the argument. Slimesicle said that while he does like his stands and the positive aspects of the community, such as the fan art and people becoming friends over common interest, he does worry about the toxic side of stands with idolization and long term effects it can have on both the stands and the creators. Conrad's pants made a similar statement, and he said that obsession and blindly following creators is a big problem. However, he does try to keep his stands under control and knows to set boundaries, and does appreciate the good sides of it. I feel as if these responses are actually pretty similar to what Josh said, except they also pointed out some good parts of the community like forming friendships and making cool art. But to be honest, I don't really consider forming friendships and making fan art a defining part of what separates a stand from a fan. If you don't have any stands, you would probably still have fan art drawn of you by normal fans. I think what separates a stand from a normal fan is the toxic parts of the community, which range from anything as small as spamming a phrase to get it on the trending tab to attacking other creators. However, that is just my personal opinion, and not something I think is set in stone like other arguments I have had. I also think Mental had a very interesting take on the situation. Mental said on Twitter that, I am not listening to a man who doesn't show his audience his face talk about stand culture. And he also said what I have previously said. That being, that just because most of Dream's audience is chill, doesn't mean he can't call out the toxic parts of his fanbase. Honestly, I don't entirely agree with Mental's first point. I don't think it matters considering basically every other content creator involved with Dream stands does show their face. However, I still think it is worth mentioning just to bring it up as it is another discussion point. The last person I want to talk about is Frosty. I already previously mentioned how Frosty called Dream out on his tweet about Tom Brady. But he also made a direct response to Josh's tweet as well. He basically made the same points I did, saying that Josh is 100% correct and that content creators that stand culture feed into their egos and are too scared to call their toxic stands out as they are afraid of losing them. I think Frosty's opinion might actually be one of the most important. Frosty, from what I know, has no relation to the Minecraft community at all. Everyone I've talked about previously, no matter if they are with Josh or against them, is, at least a little bit, part of the Minecraft community. Josh and Huckbox have kind of distanced themselves from it in recent months, but they still interact with a lot of people from it. Frosty is the outsider looking in, and I think that as an outsider with no attachment to either side, and his opinion is pretty important. Frosty represents the average person seeing all of the Dream and Josh Twitter drama going down, and giving their thoughts on it. While Frosty cannot speak for everyone whose first interaction with Dream was today, I don't think it is good for Dream to have a prominent member in the overall gaming community side against them. Overall, what did we learn from this controversy? Well, I don't think we really learned anything. Chances are that this is only the beginning of the drama. Dream has shown himself to not only be completely unable to control his stands, but also not accept any responsibility for his stands, or even accept any criticism that his stands are toxic at all. He and some of his friends keep using the same weak arguments that not all stands are bad, and ignoring any of the real criticisms. If there is any saving grace to this debate, is that I continue to be proven right with my videos on Dream Stands. I think this is like the fourth video I've made covering this topic, and so far all my predictions are coming true. The issue of Dream Stands is getting bigger and bigger, and they're acting worse and worse each week. More and more people are starting to catch on to this and turn against Dream. And with people like Josh and Frosty speaking out, my prediction that major players in the YouTube and Twitch community will call Dream out on his wrongdoings is also starting to become true. So good luck to Dream and all his friends who think they can just sweep toxic fans under the rug. May the odds be ever in your favor, I guess. Why did you draw that? Why did you do that? You didn't have to paint that in detail. My eyeballs are raking, I'm so close to breaking. Bullet to my head I'll be taking. Why did you draw that? Why did you do that? You didn't have to paint that in detail. My eyeballs are raking, I'm so close to breaking.